This MFL Marmac Coach Conversation brought to you by Bird Now Chevrolet. Have LeChuck Trucking and Meyer Auto Service. We're with head coach Dan Anderson after a nice win last Friday night, 19-6 to over Sumner Fredericksburg. And I got to start the conversation with defense, uh, Coach. 12 tackles for a loss, five sacks, uh, two turnovers forced, uh, only at 215 yards of total offense given up, and six overall points. That's a pretty good effort. Uh, what made it click for you last week? Well, the kids, uh, they executed the game plan well. Um, Sumner Fred is, uh, you know, they're, they're a much better team this year, and we knew they were going to be. So a big part of it was just make sure going into this game that our kids understood, you know, the the team that we're going against and what we were up against. And and we had to take them serious, and we did, and, and they were everything uh, we expected them to be. And our kids said that they were, you know, extremely physical and tough. Um, you know, we uh, got them in a few situations where it was, you know, second long, third long, and we expected to pass. And, Got a little pressure on them. I thought our defensive line did a great job. You know, they're when I mean, we don't have to blitz and our D line gets a, gets pressure, and so that really helps the DBs out. You know, Sumner Fred also was they're they're actually were sitting number one in the state in sacks, and we were number two. And uh, you know, they only got one sack on Friday night against us, and it was actually on a bootleg, and it was towards the end of the game. And we we told our quarterback just to keep it if he didn't see anything, and he got tackled for a loss. Um, so our offensive line did an excellent job too. You know, giving our quarterback time, but you know. Yeah, defensively, um, you know, the kids ran to the ball. If you can hold a team to six points, you usually have a pretty good chance to win. And on the offensive side of the thing, you mentioned the play of the offensive line, 305 yards rushing for your team, an average of 8.5 per tote, and uh, you ended up with Wyatt, 152 yards and one touchdown. Carver, uh, 123 yards and two touchdowns. When you saw those stats, uh, how big was your smile? Uh, that was great. I didn't realize that we had two guys over 100 yards because they were tough yards there. And they were, uh, Sumner Fred was making it tough. They had a lot of guys in the box, playing a lot of man coverage. You know, they, uh, you know, we, we tried to put uh, twins out one side, you know, see what they do. And, and they, you know, they moved a free safety over. They left all their linebackers in the box. And, you know, so we were trying to hit a few things across the middle. And their DBs really did a nice job in man coverage of, you know, of uh, keeping us in check too. So they did what they wanted to do and the yards were tough, but uh, we figured if we could get past that, those linebackers in the D line, then there was a lot of, you know, open space back there, a lot of green grass to run. And so, you know, we were able to bust a couple big runs once we got through that initial line. I think Wyatt had a, maybe like a 55 yard run and Carver had a 54 yard run, you know, and so that really helps out those stats, but the offensive line did a nice job talking, communicating because some of Fred, was moving a lot. They were stemming and moving their defensive line around quite a bit and uh, trying to cause some confusion. But uh, our guys were up to the task. And, uh, yeah, I mean, 300-plus 300, 300 yards rushing against Sumner Fredericksburg is, is pretty solid. And, of course, uh, with what you guys want to do, uh, you like the uh, ground and pound game. Uh, you like uh, controlling uh, the clock, keeping that line of scrimmage going. But you mentioned uh, you were able to hit on some explosive plays the other night. How important is it uh, having that potential, knowing the fact that uh, a lot of high school teams are going to struggle if they have to go 80, 85 yards on a consistent basis? Yeah, it, it uh, makes life a little easier when you can bust a couple big ones and you don't have to work at, you know, five, seven, six, three yards of crack all the way down the field because something's bound to go wrong. You know, good teams are going to make plays. You're going to get a penalty somewhere, you know, or they're going to make a play and for a tackle for loss maybe. But uh, we didn't have that many negative plays. Like we'd said, we played pretty clean football. I think we only had two penalties in the game too. So I, you know, I was really proud of the kids for that. But you know, we were able to, to keep the clock going. Uh, we, you know, we were playing good defense and, you know, we were able to get some first downs on some passes. We had, you know, a couple bootlegs and, uh, you know, a couple passes across the middle to Decker. Cause like I said, they, uh, you know, their free safety was, was, uh, you know, getting out wide, covering up a receiver and they were leaving the middle of the field open. And, and uh, you know, we were able to complete some passes. I think Zach was, uh, was seven for 13. So that's pretty good. 55%. So, you know, we'll take that most nights and, and he didn't throw any interceptions. So, uh, you know, he played a good game and uh, our receivers did a pretty good job catching the ball, did drop a couple of them. You know, we'd like to have back and you know, overthrew a couple of receivers once or twice. But, you know, we'll, we have things to work on. But, uh, you know, I, I was really pleased with the results. And I know uh, going back to that Osage game, we talked a lot about those self-inflicted wounds, those penalties, those turnovers. And seemingly over the last couple of weeks, uh, you have done a good job of cleaning that things up. And obviously uh, you hope to continue that. What do you credit that to over the last couple of weeks? 
Um, you know, I think a lot of it just has to do with the kids growing up some, you know, and, and understanding that, uh, that they can't make those mistakes and, and expect to beat good football teams, you know, and it, it, little things in the huddle, you know, like, you know, we cleaned things up a couple of weeks ago before the Columbus game. Like I said, we cleaned up our huddle, you know, I got on the guys and all those little things add up to big things. So, you know, cleaned up our huddle, cleaned up our language, cleaned up some buses, the locker rooms. You know, a lot of things clean up the way we dress to go to away games, lots of things. And just tried to, you know, those things all transition into to winning and the right attitude. And and the last two weeks, it's really showed we played really good football against really good football teams. And, uh, you know, we've still got a couple tough ones left on the schedule coming up, but we've set ourselves up for right where we want to be. You know, we're undefeated in the district, you know, sitting here four and one and uh, we're in the driver's seat. We just got to keep on going. And how confident is your team uh, based on, uh, after the first three games uh, and based on uh, your first two district games. Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're pretty confident. I mean, they trust our system. These, these guys do, they, they understand that no matter what a defense is trying to do against our offense, that, you know, we have answers and, you know, our coaching staff works extremely hard at scouting our opponents and knowing what they're, you know, we expect that they're going to do and has a good, have a good game plan, you know, so my, my assistant coaches do a great job of always having a good game plan when I'm, and, you know, uh, uh, the kids, like I said, trust what we're doing and, uh, you know, they trust each other. And I think that's really important. You know, the trust factor there, you know, the kids expect, you know, have high expectations out of each other, you know, and then the offense, you know, uh, you know, you know, if, if the, if the defense isn't playing great, then the offense finds a way to, to pick it up and, you know, the other way around too, you know, if the offense isn't quite clicking, the defense has been playing great for us. You know, the last couple of weeks, it's been defense has really been playing awesome football and, and, uh, you know, uh, but we expect we're going to see some teams that definitely, you know, we got we got Cascade coming up here in a couple of weeks and they're a pretty high powered offense. And obviously Beckman's a high powered offense, too. So, you know, these guys just trust each other, trust the, the process, trust what we do. And and it shows. And uh, Friday night, you got Postville coming to town. Uh, what do you expect to see out of uh, Friday night's game? Well, you know, big thing Friday night is, is you know, we're, we're, we're heavy favorites, you know, to win. And it's important to motivate our guys and understand that. Uh, you know, we, we have to, to be focused this week, being a homecoming week and not get caught up in everything else. Cause we always tell our kids that homecoming's fun. It's great for everybody, but homecoming revolves around the football game. And, you know, we have a lot of fans, a lot of student body plan to come back and they want to see a good product out there. And our job is to give it to them. So, um, you know, we've got some ways to motivate our guys this week and we've been motivating them and, and uh, you know, some of these starters, you know, we, we hope uh, that we can get them in there. They do their job and, and maybe they'll be out of there, you know, by halftime. And, and uh, you never know, though. I mean, Postal does have a few good players on their team and, uh, you know, but they have been struggling, you know, this year and haven't won a game yet. So, you know, this week we spend a lot of time on ourselves, working on our blocking, our tackling, our techniques, things that we've seen on film and other games. And the number one thing here is, you know, our goal is not to beat Postville. Our goal has always been to be district champions and we put ourselves in the right position to do that. But we can't come out flat in this game. And, you know, it's kind of like you got to keep your knife sharp, you know, and, and uh, uh, you know, we don't want to come out and win this game and play poorly or, you know, play kind of like a dull blade. You know what I mean? Um, one thing I, I told our kids, a stat that uh, it's, it's kind of alarming and a little surprising is that everybody that's beat Postville has actually lost the next week. And so, you know, we have to make sure that that we stay focused and that we keep, you know, keep sharp and, and um, you know, no matter what happens against Postville, you know, we got to make sure that our guys play our, style, our, our type of football, our style of football, and not come out and just play to just, just to get the win. We got to play to play our best. And if we do that, we expect to get the win, and then we'll be ready for those last two games and, and hopefully win a district title. All right, uh, Coach, uh, hopefully you can keep the uh, winning ways going, and it'll be a happy homecoming for Bulldog Nation uh, coming up on Friday night. Keep your guys healthy. We wish you best of luck. All right, appreciate it, Darren. Thanks. Is MFL Marmac Coach Conversation brought to you by Meyer Auto Service, Havlicek Trucking, and Birdnow Chevrolet.